Hello, and welcome to Software Pulse Building Java Desktop Applications, and I'm John McNeil. And in today's video, what we're going to have a look at is we're going to take a look at calling a web service in our application. Um, so in a previous video, we looked at building up a web service, and what we're going to do in this video is actually call that web, web service that we built in the earlier videos. So I'm going to jump straight in. I'm going to switch to my Eclipse IDE and we'll quickly build up a project and see how we go. Actually, before we start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Soap UI and I'm going to call the web service just to make sure everything's up and running and working. So here's the Soap UI that we use to test our, um, <clears throat> our web service in the first place. And if I press the button here, we should get a response. And I get, hello, Fred, I understand that you are 22 years old. So our web service is up and running. That's all well and good. Now let's switch to our Eclipse. So we'll just create a project, um, a Java project. We're just going to do um, we're just going to use Java Standard Edition, and I'm using 1.8. So there's nothing particularly flash or fancy here. And uh, I'm just going to create a new class. <clears throat> we'll keep it in the uh, default package um, just because this is going to be a single class application. Um, so I'm going to it was hello age, wasn't it? Um, and I'll do that. And that will give us our basic entry class So there we are, there's our code. <clears throat> I've got some imports to do, so I'm gonna go through and do those again. Again, I'll go through them um, one at a time so that we can see what imports we're actually using. Quite often I get caught out by importing something from um, one package and it should have been from another package. So, so we're gonna use java.net for the URL connection. I think most of these are java.net. Uh, yeah, java.net for the HTTP. The URL is java.net as well. Uh, byte array stream is input output, Java IO. Same, oh, I've done that. Uh, output stream, input stream, these are all Java IO things. Which hopefully you'll be fairly familiar with. Uh, right. The document is org w3c dom, um, as is the node list, and the builder factory is Java X XML. Well, yeah, XML parsers, and the same with the document builder. Uh, input sources. Um, org xml sax java um, the string reader is java io and the error is a java ac x xml parser uh, what else we got sax exception which is obviously going to be org xml sax and io is going to be io java io right so there we go so all the imports are done. We know what packages we're doing. So everything's all in one class. What I've got is a main method which creates an instance of this class. Um, and then it calls a public method called get hello age, passing it two parameters, which is the name and the age that the web service will use when it calls. And when you call get hello age, 
what you'll get back is the XML response from the web service and then we will parse that XML response um, to pull out the string message we got back from the web service. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and in our get hello method, um, what I've done is I've just hard coded the URL to the web service. Now, these things are tricky, um, or at least I find them tricky. So if I go back to my SOAP UI, you can see on the top here, and this is why it's good to use something like SOAP UI to help you test your web service and make sure you can connect to it and then you know what you're trying to do when you code it. So you see that URL there, HTTP localhost colon 8080 forward slash hello age forward slash hello to you. Okay, that is what we are using as our web service URL. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create, <clears throat> I'll skip past all that, I'll come back to that in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a URL object using our web service URL. We're going to create a connection, a, um, yeah, a, 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 a connection, and then we're going to cast it to an HTTP connection because this is going to be an HTTP call. Um, and then we've got our HTTP connection. And what we can do is then we can set up a whole load of parameters. So I'm going to go back to SOAP UI now. So um, things that we didn't really look at and don't use, well, if I can just pull it up over here, you can see there's a whole load of properties over here. So follow redirects, endpoint, encoding, message size, um, skip soap action, force things. There's a whole load of things that you can set um, over here, not to mention over here you can set header information um, and, and various other things so like if you need to authenticate um, is that one authentication yeah this one's authenticating if you need to authenticate in order to use web service you can set it all in here right. you can do similar things with your HTTP connection you can set all those things up ready to make a connection ours is a really trivial web service so we don't have to do a lot of that but one of the things I am doing is I am send I'll come back to that one again I'll come back to the bit I was going to talk here I'm saying it's it's the um, the content type is UTF-8 um, and again over in SOAP UI we could see that up there the encoding set is UTF-8 so there's an example of copying that across um, we're passing in the SOAP action in this particular web service there is no SOAP action um, the method we're doing we could have done a get a call a get call to the service we're going to do a post call here because we're going to send the name and the age um, as um, elements within the package we send as opposed to on the URL call <coughs> we're going to have input and output to the web service and we're not just going to send things and we're not just going to um, get things we're going to send and get things um, and then what we do is we get an output stream and then we write the buffer now the buffer bits a bit i've stepped around so let me come back and talk about the buffer so we want to make an xml a call to this web service it's a soap ui call uh, web service and therefore it's expecting some xml and as i just mentioned when we looked at soap ui there was nothing in the header there was no header element to pass so the header is blank and the body is, we're using the um, hell namespace, which is defined on the on the lines above that I'll come back to. And we're gonna call say hello, which if you follow through building of the web service, you'll see that our web service was um, say hello. And it took, we're gonna to pass two parameters here. Um, I'll just change that to George and we'll change this to 44 just to make it different so they're the two parameters we're going to pass um, actually what we should have done was we should have passed the parameters that were passed into this method I've hard coded it now I'll stick with hard coding it um, and then we close off the the soap envelope and the bit I didn't 
cover is over here on the here we are defining the namespace hel so if you're familiar with xml um, you'll know that you can define a namespace and then you can by using the namespace later on it inserts all of this big long piece of text here that would be long too long to type so it's just a, a way of tagging something to make it easier to abbreviate is one thing but also the namespace defines um, encapsulates everything within that namespace it's a bit like scope you know things within that namespace are within that scope but we don't need to worry about any of that here today um, so basically this was how my web service was packaged up it was packaged up into this um, hello age app web software pulse um, package so when I use hell I'm saying that it's in that package and we're looking for say hello um, within that package because there may be a say hello in a different package somewhere else is all I'm trying to say right so that all of that is converted into a byte array here so we get the length of the byte array to, we get the length of, of we find out how many bytes are in that XML there and we create a, create a buffer we create a byte array called buffer and then what we do is we put all of the bytes into our buffer ready to go and then down here once we've got our output stream we can write our buffer all our bytes out to our output stream we can close our output stream and then we're ready to read the response from the server so we get an input stream we use our same HTTP connection and we call the get input stream um, <clears throat> put it into a buffer reader read each line append it onto a big long string because we know that the XML we're going to get back isn't very long so we can just chuck it all into a string um, I print out the string just so I can see what it is print a spare line so I can just get a separator and then I parse my XML because when I run it you'll see that the XML I get back is well actually if we go to our soap UI the XML you get back is oh, hang on, I've moved it I still got ah, there it is looking for the tab you get this line here that's what you get back and whilst the bit we want is in there so hello Fred I understand is in there we get all this other rubbish so we want we don't want all that other rubbish so we don't want all that other good information um, so we're gonna parse it so we pass the string into our parse XML file parse XML file method private method that we've created and what that does is it calls some some library functions that we we brought in and it returns us a document which is follows the document object model which is um, if you do a lot of web or, or um, XML you'll know that um, the document object model is a series of nodes structured um, in in the in the structure of a of a document hence it's a document you get back and you can navigate the various bits of information by traversing through the nodes which is exactly what we're going to do here um, so let me just go down to the parse XML bit it's quite simple so you get a document builder factory from the document builder factory new instance and then you we're just going to create a new document builder there's nothing flash about this and then we're going to pass in a string reader um, sorry I'm going to pass in an input source um, <coughs> from our string reader um, because the parse needed an input source and so we had to put it through a string reader put it into an input source and then put it into the parser you can also if you're opening a file so if you've got an XML file you can just pass the file straight in to the parser and it will parse that file for you so if you've got a file on your hard drive you can just it seems a lot less hassle just going db dot parse the file and what you get back is a document okay so let's take a look at this document so let me go back to my soap and go back to my XML here so there was an envelope I thought it was a header somewhere 
but I can't see one. There was a body, and then there was a namespace to, so again, namespace is very much like the hell over there, they've just said, this is the namespace. And we've got a say hello response. And then in the say hello response, I've got this value here. And that's the value I'm after. I'm after the contents of the say hello response. I'm not after, so I'm not after this namespace here. Yeah, which would be an attribute of say hello. I'm after the contents between the hello response things. So what I'm going to say is document, get me an element by tag name. And then it's this namespace to hello response. So again, using SOAP UI allows you to see what the response back from the server is so that you know what you're trying to code. Um, I'm sure there was another way I could have got it, but the SOAP UI thing just tested it for me and gave me all the information I needed. So that was nice and straightforward. Um, so I get a node list because there may be more than one hello response. I may have 20 hello responses. Um, <clears throat> I have actually only got one, I know I've only got one, and hence I've done something that people will be turning in their graves. I've got node list item zero, give me the first one. I haven't even checked, I even got any. Um, and then I've called this get text content. That's gonna get me the bit in between the opening and closing tags of the, of the namespace to colon hello response, say hello response. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a system out print line. The response from the web service call is colon Da -da, whatever it turns out to be. So, hopefully you're still with me. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna press the run button and we'll see what we get. Now, bear in mind, we called the web service from our SOAP UI, so we knew it was up and running. So there should be no reason and we should get George and 44. I can't remember, yeah, George and 44 back. So, press the button. And down in the console, you can see we've got this big long XML thing here, like I said we'd get. And then we've got a space, and then we've got the response from the web service call is, and then, hello George, I understand you are 44 years old. So there we are. We have just called and consumed our web service. And whilst I talked a lot about it, there wasn't really a huge amount of code there. And um, so if you need to call a web service, hopefully that will get, at least get you started. I might come back and take a look at some more complicated versions a bit later on. Um, but anyway, um, I'm John McNeil, and this is Software Pulse, building Java desktop applications. And I hope you've enjoyed following along, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks for watching.